tires are trash, my friend. Trash. They are so flat. There's like an inch deflection. That's pretty gnarly. So, I'm glad it's not the wheels. Need to change out these lug nuts because those ones look terrible and I don't know that they got the white washers on them, so. Needs tire. But that's not what we're doing today. Maybe later. But that's not what we're doing today. Let me show you where the real fun is at. Come on, really need to go get some new pins for this thing. So the real fun for today lies under here. I'm glad I got it nice and hot before we dug into this because doing it while it's cold, I mean, it's just too easy. You just gotta get into it while it's hot. That's how you get things done. Burn the crap out of yourself. Make sure you never wanna do it again. That's how you learn. So this guy, this feller here, it's giving us lots of trouble. Now, can it be fixed? Sure. Why would we want to fix this when we have that? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Not clean yet. Just a sec. Ta-da! All right, it's all cleaned up. You're probably wondering why this instead of that when they look exactly the same. Well, I'll give it to you. They do look pretty much exactly the same until you get them up next to each other. This guy, is what is uh, affectionately known as a GT40 intake, upper and lower plenum. You use this on the uh, five liters. This design is specifically for the explorers. However, the intake runners and everything else are pretty much the same. The difference between this and the Cobra is the Cobra is polished, but looks almost identical to this. Uh, flows almost exactly the same as this one. And the true GT40 intake that was on the Lightning was a tubular design, where there's welded in tubes, it wasn't a cast. But the inside diameters were basically the same, and this actually flows better than that original GT40. And we're talking like just a tiny little bit, but it does flow better. So, got this guy in a junkyard for $160. That is quite the find and it's going to help out this little displacement engine. Now that intake that's on there, the H01 that comes with that five liter, it's okay. Okay, it's not that great. Uh, this is not better than like a, say an Edelbrock or a uh, Trick Flow or something along those lines, but it is much better than factory and you can do a lot with this intake and have a lot of fun with it still. So. This intake plenum is going to go on. Uh, the dead giveaway for this guy is that there's offset intake runners, whereas the factory HO intake plenum is a straight line with rectangles. So I decided to take the badge cover off of the factory intake that's on there because I like it better, the 504 HO, rather than the one that came with the Explorer that was just a 5 liter V8. So I spray painted it black, sanded down the top, got it back to its original condition, and we're gonna use this rather than this because this is a roller HO motor. This, not so much. So the Explorer does come with GT40P heads, which flow a lot better um, than these factory E7 heads. However, the spark plugs are kind of offset and we'd have to get different headers or try and figure out spark plugs, spark plug wires and stuff like that to get it to work. Also, don't know yet that we want to dive that deep into this engine if we're considering doing a 351 or something along those lines. Yes, the GT40P heads can fit on the 351. However, we don't want to dive into throwing all a bunch of stuff at this one until we figure out exactly if we're going to keep this there has been talks of LS thrown around again. I want to keep it forward. So we're going to try and keep it forward just a little bit longer and see how far we can go. But Ford is really expensive. So getting heads for this thing, expensive. Getting intakes, expensive. Uh, injectors, it's expensive. Mass airflow, throttle body, all that stuff is expensive. But today we're going to throw this guy on there and it's really not that big of a task everything just comes off everything goes back on just gaskets drop it on throttle body it's going to use the factory uh injectors we're not changing anything with that so ah without further ado let's jump back into this and tear it down shoot and do and do ah. so most all this stuff on top's half inch 
you just got to disconnect and drain the radiator as the water ports do go across on the inside so we'll get that done get this all disconnected in the intake so let's go ahead and jump in i got a new idle air uh, bypass or idle air control we'll throw that on too that's probably our biggest problem with the idling and everything else like that but i just want to pull the whole thing off replace all the gaskets start fresh and i didn't want to do that by leaving this guy on here uh, when there are better options for really cheap. So that's why we've got a GT40 intake now. Come on now. Get out of there. There we go. Neighbors are having a blast over there doing something. Okay. Drain the radiator, which I don't have a good pan for, so it is going everywhere. Hmm, how am I going to catch all of this? And we're back. Got a drain dial, disconnected the hoses. Now we'll start pulling all these bolts out and plugs and everything else. Get this upper intake off. But something's got a little more juice. In it. Mice really had a field day with this thing. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect the throttle cable and the mount and it should come off. Other than all this vacuum stuff on the back, but we'll deal with that later. Oh man, you can just smell the fuel. It is bad, bad. Be glad to get down through that tank of fuel and get this cleaned up. This, that is, that is bad. It is no bueno for show. All right, there she is. So as you can see, little tiny ports all in line. Also got a uh, water temperature sensor for this guy, just in case. I don't know what just flicked over there. Didn't go down the intake runner, I don't think. Find out shortly, I guess. I'm working on it, all right? Jeez, so needy. Come out of the biscuit. Jeez. Oh, man. Come out of it. You know you want to. There we go. Whew. Ooh, this fuel is bad, man. Man, oh, man. I'm going to pop all these off. I'm going to redo, redo the timing anyways. I'm pretty sure it's pretty far off. Oof. Clean that up some. Rotor's pretty bad too. <sighs> shoop, shoop a doop, shoop a doop. Oh, oh, it's gonna come off easy, huh? I don't believe you. Well, how about that? Oh yeah, if I didn't uh, mention that you need to change the oil after doing this, you should change your oil after doing this. All right, it's out of the way. I only say that because I can hear the water running down into the pan. Arr, she blows. Get this sucker out of here. This. Oh. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I'm gonna try and keep a lot of this from going down into the intake runners. Hmm, there's a lot of crap down in here. Some old RTV stuck in the corners over here. Doesn't look too bad. Oh, it's just flaking as it's coming out. Good, 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 good. All right, I'm gonna stuff some paper dowels down in here and start cleaning this out. Oh gosh, yeah, okay. Let me show you what I got going on in here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is not good for your cooling system. Oh, I don't want to poke too much down in there. I'm going to vacuum that out. But that is, uh, that is no bueno. No go at this point. Uh, get in there. You're going to run like 10 gallons of Berryman through this fuel system and get done. These intake runners are nasty. This thing has been running badly for quite some time. And then just a piece in the valley on either side, catch all the junk so it doesn't go down into the pan. Oh man. Let's scrape this bad dog. This PCV is full. It's like not doing anything at all. And we'll go back through and we'll vacuum out all these holes. You can also use pressurized air and blow them out. It'll come out to the top. That works too. Whatever your preference is. Okay, it's all scraped down. It was pretty bad, not gonna lie. Uh, there was a bunch of chunks of nasty oil up in the top of the valley and stuff like that. Sprayed it all out. So I'm going to go and pick up the gaskets that I ordered 
and some oil and a filter and we'll throw this guy back together. I was going to pull the EGR tubes off the back of the heads, but I think I'll give that a wait and we'll just plug this in for now. Um, and we'll slap all this back together. I'll be right back. We're back. Got my gaskets. We're all ready to go. So I'm going to show you the difference real quick on the GT40. And this is the same for the traditional, like the actual GT40 intake, the Explorer intake and the Cobra intake. Here is the factory five liter HO intake gasket. This is the GT40 intake plenum. Each one of these runners is significantly larger in the GT40. We have a better flow, uh, better flow angle, just better all around. Uh, good thing with this Explorer one is that it does not have the exhaust gas recirculation back up through the intake manifold. So that comes from the side, from the back, from a different area. And for us, it will be there. So anyways, we're going to throw this guy in lower first. So let me grab the lowers. I'm going to spray those with copper, stick them on there, throw on some RTV, let it set just a minute. I'm not using these little rubber guys that come with this kit. I had one uh, spit out on me on my way home from Fort Knox back to Arizona, and it was the rear. These little guys, cool idea. Don't use them. If you don't get that intake set perfectly on the top of it, it'll squirt out one side and then you'll just puke oil everywhere. RTV is the way to go. Spray this copper on real quick. This cost copper gasket stuff, fantastic. All right. Yeah. Oh, RTV. Woo. Let that tack for a second and then we'll slap it on. Okay, let's plop this guy down on here after we scrape it real quick. They appear to have forgotten a spot. All right, straight down on her. Little ploop. All right. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh, funny guy, huh? All right, some tape on it while we're setting everything else up. So now all the cool things that we get to do is put the temperature sending unit in, the heater core lines, injectors, the fuel rail. Yeah, distributor can go back in in a minute. Sure am hungry. And we got a stripped out bolt in there. I got to take off of the old intake manifold and then clean up the injectors, spray them out, and then we can pop them back in. All these are fun things. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited to do them, but I'm going to go ahead and skip through some of it for you. And starting now. Scrappy did not have a thermostat in her, and it's filthy. Kind of hard to tell. Just take my word for it. It's really, really bad. So she could do with a flush once we get this all apart. All right, I'm going to get back at it. We'll order a uh, thermostat in. That'll probably come in tomorrow morning, and then we'll throw it on. Injectors are back in, fuel rails, harness, everything. 
Need to get another thermostat so I can throw that on. Once we get this intake plenum on the top on, we can drop in the distributor and then we can start filling her back up with coolant. But as for tonight, I'm gonna call it a night and we're gonna hit it hard again in the morning. Can't forget to order that thermostat though. All right, see you in the morning. Good morning, back. We ran to the store again. Got our thermostat and gaskets. Thermostat is in. There's a little trick since it's a horizontal thermostat. What you do is you wrap a little piece of wire around the thermostat, pull it up to this tube, hold pressure on it so you can get it lined up. Then once you got the bolts in, pull the wire back out and it's set, good to go. So I took the heater hoses off and the metal line that ran across here because we're getting rid of the EGR spacer and the throttle body needs to sit back further and the throttle linkage is gonna sit here and this wouldn't work if that tubing was there. So it gets a little inlet here. We'll run the tubes over and across. The only thing I gotta do is take this temperature sensor for the computer and put that in, cut that little section of tube out and we'll splice it in to the heater line that goes up there. So, a couple of things with this non-EGR GT40 intake. You can tell it's non-EGR because, well, it doesn't have an EGR hole here. So the things that you need to do for this intake in particular to make it work on that car, because this car has an intake temperature sensor, intake air temperature, which is on the old intake manifold. Now, if this were an EGR GT40 intake, it would have the little hole there and there would be a boss on this intake manifold right here to drill and tap that sensor into place so this one does not have that so what we're going to end up doing is drilling and tapping it into one of these bungs on either side and you figure out which one we want to go with it can be in a runner um, these are kind of thin down here to run it into one of these runners but we're gonna do is tap it in on one of these guys here and call it a day. Probably this one on this back side. I'll have to take a look at it again. But either way, we'll get that tapped in and it'll be good to go. I may actually do it right here where there's plenty of space and get rid of this stuff. This is all getting capped off anyways, aside from some smaller hoses that are gonna go back for the fuel pressure regulator and the PCB, so on and so forth. But that's what you gotta do to make that intake manifold work on this car. There's also a spot back here where you would drill and tap into the water jacket for the EGR cooler line that runs up and back forward because there's one on top of this rail that goes to the front of the spacer and then one back here that goes to the back of the spacer and if you're running EGR it would behoove you to have the cooler to keep your intake air temperatures down so you would keep that in place but we're not running the spacer because we got no EGR we're throttle body straight up here so we don't need those cooler lines anymore so I'm not going to tap drill and tap this intake manifold to make that work but that's the short of it for the gt40 intake manifold working on this particular car other than trying to make the throttle linkage work because the throttle linkage bolts to the spacer but we'll get that figured out it won't be a, that big of an issue and that's the update so far i'm going to dive back into it get this plenum up on there after i get it drilled and tapped and then we'll go from there I need to really flush this thing out so once i get this distributor back in here We'll give this thing a good flush. Get all that crap out of the uh, cooling system. There's a lot of junk in there. All right, there we go. Drilled and tapped. Intake air temperature, good to go. It's in a plenum. It's gonna get the right readings. Now it's ready to go on to this bad dog. Routed up the heater lines, up to the heater core. It's all good to go, ready to go in. There's that piece I was telling you about. I cut out that section for the uh, coolant temperature for the computer and then the new sensor for the dash. Let's put it in. That sounded bad or good. Depends on how you look at it. That's great for the back. So the 
Bolts from the other intake will not work in here. You gotta use the ones that came with the intake plenum from the Explorer. They're just longer. That way they fit down in there. Still gotta figure out the throttle cable, but I think we'll get something figured out in there. What you looking at? I see you. All right, I can't do this anymore. I can't do the conduit. Can't, get out of here. Oh good, it's breaking apart. Get off here. Help. Okay, throttle. Let's see what you got. I think we can make a little bracket. Okie dokie, you win. What the F? All right, out with the old idle air that didn't appear to be working. Throw that up on the shelf just in case. Somewhere down the road we need one. Got the new one here. Ooh, home stretch distributor, then we'll make that bracket. Hmm, danger, Will Robinson. All right, so I found a piece of metal from that 460 that I think will work. Is it'll go drill these out and they'll go on either side. They're exact same. Uh, these bolt holes are the exact same width that I need for the throttle body. So I'll drill these two out and then we'll drill a couple holes here for the bracket itself. That'll do, that'll work perfectly for us. That was a win, that was a good find. Sweet. Throttle body is hooked up, throttle cables hooked up, brackets in place. It wasn't that hard. Drilled out those holes, drilled some new holes, bolted back up. Now I'm gonna throw the distributor in, get everything wired up, and then we can flush this system and that's it, man. That's it. The only reason this took so long over two days, well, it didn't take long, but over two days was because I didn't start this till 4 p.m. yesterday. Uh, had I had the whole day to work on it, we would have knocked it out a day at the most. And that's just including running back and forth from the store. But it's relatively simple and relatively, I would give it an intermediate on the difficulty scale. All right, let's throw this junk in. All right, let's find. Top dead center number one. Also get our first look at these spark plugs. Oh man, they're motocraft. So I mean, that's either good or bad. Good that they replaced them again with motocraft or bad they've never been replaced ever in the history of this engine. Holy crikey. I'm leaning more towards never been replaced after that. Oof. I'm sure they've been replaced. They are fouled. All right, I think we are good to turn her over and see where we're at. Get that colder intake tube on. Won't like running without the mess here. That's for show. Let's see what we got. see what this wobbling is all about and change this oil. What is, is that a tie rod? Oh, the steering rack is 
toast. It's a goner. Oh, yikes. Was a little hub play. Let's get these off. Well, well they hurt these wheels. That's for sure. Poor girls. Oh, they're so light. So nice. That steering rack is, she's not, not good. Not good at all. No buener. Picked up a fuel filter too. We'll swap that out since that fuel that's in there is garbage. Oh, the pan has been crunched too. <sighs> this poor car. Poor girl. So not exactly the find you're looking for when you're changing oil. That sucker's crushed. <laughs> Still got great oil pressure. Uh, doesn't bobble when you get on the throttle or anything else like that. So I think the pickup is all right. And if I'm pretty sure these are dual sump pans. And there's a pickup up here. I could be wrong. Somebody let me know in the comments. Pretty sure though. Putting the sh tires back on. Oh, wait. Perfect. Got some new mag lug nuts for this. The other ones were bad. That steering rack is so bad. That's a shame. Kind of skirted away from many super expensive fixes and I think that's just gonna be one of them. Oh man. Woo. I said there ain't much we can do about that. You know, all the money that's being spent around here, I should probably get a regular jack. Oh, good boy. All right, go. Okay, oil's changed. It's good to go. Has a brand new fill filter on the back, surprisingly. So let's get this thing up, warmed up properly, and then uh, take it for a spin. See how these squares for tires hold up. Steering's scary though, man. Scary. Rule number one before starting an engine after an oil change, put oil back in it. I already did, I'm just checking. What's that over there? Let's give that a second to sit and then we'll check the level. I mean, it was already full. I would just check it just to check it again. Um, but we'll check the level, fire it up, warm it up, speed it up. Hopefully you don't blow it up. Really wish I had taken these valve covers off and painted them. Maybe next time. I'm sure if we like this setup, we'll end up changing the heads anyways, but not right now. Fixed. Run it. Love it. Add more to it. Screaming you're hearing back there is the alternator. More. If you post down there, found on road day, I'm gonna be very disappointed in you. Fix the repair daily, all those. That sucker is gonna explode. All right, let me shut it off before this alternator just explodes everywhere. All right, we're gonna risk it. We're gonna take it to the store, get an alternator, that way I'll get my test drive in. I think it'll last there. It's been making this noise for a while. Wish me luck. We're just gonna change it out here. I had almost no voltage to start it back up at O'Reilly's, so luckily AutoZone had one. We're gonna change it out real quick, get back on the road. Hopefully it starts up. Jerk. Oh, hi, how are you? Woo, alternator's in, it started. Get it back to the house. That power steering rack is just puking. It's done for. So we got a nice little test drive out of it, but now we need to get it home before it can't steer it anymore. Let's go. She's a ripper, by the way. 
she's a ripper. Tires are kind of sketch, but she's a ripper. She died a couple times on the way back from the store. It was almost like it was starving for fuel. I've had an alternator go out on these things a couple times, and when the battery starts getting low on voltage, your computer can't control the engine anymore, and it kind of bogs and then dies. But this would, the car would start immediately. It wasn't like a slow crank or anything. It would start, and then you'd get a throttle, and it was good to go, and then it'd start bogging again. So I'm wondering if it's starving for fuel, or the fuel's just so bad. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna have to take a look at it and figure it out. But as of right now, It idles, that's a win. Work with on that end, it doesn't surge anymore. Good morning. Figured out what was causing the uh, stumbling and bogging and then dying, pretty sure anyways. But I left a ground strap off on the backside of the engine. So we'll throw that on, call it a day. See if it does it again. Rolled the heater over here, fired it up because masking tape doesn't like to stick to cold things. <gasps> masking tape? Yeah, I can't deal with this hood anymore. It's going satin black. Thanks for you all and the recommendations. I think I was gonna do it anyways, but thank you. So I suppose we'll get after it. After I eat my muffin. Nom, 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 nom. Thick in here. First couple coats are on. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna go pick up one of those big cans with the wide spray to do a finishing coat on it. <coughs> I need to get out of this shop. See you in a minute. Ah. better. Oh, I've made a huge mess. It's all painted up finally. It's not perfect, but it is way better. Went ahead and changed the spark plugs. They were all foul. They were terrible. Changed the TPS as well. It's cheap enough. Uh, that other one looked like it was factory and it was likely causing a lot of the idle issues as well. Put some new ground straps on both sides of the engine. Hopefully that bog goes away. Let's throw the scooter in the trunk just in case. Take it for a rip. and a ripper. Everything seems to be working all right. Seems like we got everything taken care of. Idle's a little high, so we just need to adjust the TPS, get that straightened back out. All you can do is make the holes a little bit bigger so you can adjust it over, and then hit it with the ohm meter. Paint came out good. It looks good. The back's not gonna be perfect because it's all rotted away, but next step, tires and fix that steering but as of right now it's a ripper and this intake well worth it we'll have to see once the fuel is better we'll give it another run uh give it a zero to 60 time that way we get a baseline and then maybe head out to uh firebird raceway and see what kind of quarter mile time we get but that's going to be it for this episode appreciate you guys sticking around and uh Really, really. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for watching. As always, have fun.